Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy, and we are back with another Hatchet Cast Shop Talk episode. And today we're going to be talking about the American Defense Manufacturing 14 and a half UIC Patrol. Correct. Yep. The Stalker UIC <laughs> Patrol. Uh, yes, yeah, Stalker. Is yeah. Right. So, Which is a special edition, right? It is a special edition rifle. So let's go ahead and start off with a disclaimer. American Defense did send this to us. It was a rifle that they wanted us to check out and review. Uh, so there's your disclaimer right there. But today we're gonna be talking about our experiences with the rifle, uh, which have been pretty awesome. And as you know, yeah. I'm a lefty. Roy, you're a righty, you're a normal person. Yeah, normal but, uh, person, you're the weirdo. Yeah, exactly. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into this. So the Stalker UIC Mod 2 Patrol, um, what makes this kind of special well i mean first off as far as for adm for you guys that are not familiar their lower receivers are full ambi just like what eric was saying a minute ago so for lefty guys out there it's you know it's it's definitely the way to go um i think everyone should have ambi lowers now everyone should obviously most manufacturers should at least offer some type of ambi but american defense does it and they do it in a really really nice platform uh the, the way their lower is designed all the controls are nice and huge even as a righty having that ability to lock the bolt open from either side of the rifle is super super handy uh very very useful so yeah. that's that is probably one of the largest features as far as how nice they are is because of that yeah i mean as far as ambidextrous there are, I mean, it's 2022 right now. You know, it's July 11th for recording this. It's 2022. The AR-15 has been out for how long? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, since probably when cavemen started fires. So let's just say that. It's been out forever. So, I mean, it's been out for a long time. And there are certain things that should just be the standard. And what I love about it. Go ahead. Guys are going to roast me for saying I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is rolling over in his grave. Roll, rolling, uh, Eugene yeah, Stoner he is, is rolling, rolling in his, his grave. grave right Let me Google it. Yeah, quick. yeah. While you Google that, I'm going to go ahead and go on my rant. So there are certain things that, uh, you know, obviously Roy and I, sh we shoot almost pretty much every day. And there are certain things that with an AR-15 type platform, you should already be doing right um one of those you should be having a quick throw on your safety selector switch all right your safety selector your your file control fire control selector there should already be a, a, thro a short throw it maybe but definitely ambidextrous i mean the military has even gone ambidextrous with their short throw um, at least have that option for have the option running. exactly like even if it's a nub on the other side, just put the nub on there. It really doesn't take anything away from the performance. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of ambi safeties and short throw safeties that that you can you can delete the other side if you don't want it. Yeah. Uh, the one that the ADM comes with, you can delete that side, right? Yeah. I, I do believe. Yeah, and you yeah, can just stick so. a standard uh, selector switch if you're not going to ever use that other side. The other one that is a giant one, if you're not flaring your magwells, Lord have mercy. You should be flaring your magwells, no matter what. Flare the flipping magwell. I mean, finally, Glock came on board with flaring the magwell with the Gen 5 series, but flare your magwell. American yeah, Defense. It should be some type of. Yeah, American Defense has flared their magwell, which should be the standard at this point in yeah. time. Um, yep. But flare your magwell. They also do have an ambidextrous mag release. That, for me, it's a lefty game changer um being able to I, I was always so jealous of everybody being able to just do it single-handedly i had to reach my non-firing hand up and actually depress the mag release to be able to get that mag out um and it completely changed how i reloaded the rifle um for years had to do it that way and now you know being able to do it with like a righty you know like a normal person uh which by the way disclaimer if I was right-handed, all lefties would be superhuman. That's what God put yeah, us at yeah. a disadvantage, so that way we wouldn't become superhuman. Demi exactly. So for all my lefties uh, out there, my southpaws, shout out. By the way, if you guys if you guys haven't, not off subject here, but on head over to ADM's website and take a look at the stalker. You're gonna have to see some pretty sick pictures up there. That uh, I'm, I'm on their website right now, taking a look at it. Uh, there's a couple of really sick pictures that uh, Berlin Hatchet, myself, and Tyler, and Eric as a as our model here. Um, we so might ADM be. has a couple of. It might be in those. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, it might, Eric might be in those uh, wearing, wearing a mask, but there's a pretty cool couple of cool pictures up here. So. Yeah. So how about that over oversized bolt 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 release too? Ah, uh, so that's that's something else that I noticed was a very nice feature is ADM decided to take some things that were pretty standard that should be the standard, and they added it to the rifle. One of those things that comes with the rifle is the Radian charging ambidextrous ambidextrous charging handle. Um, standard like why would you not make your charging handles ambidextrous you know that if that's the one thing that should have just been deleted after 19 whatever you know 4 bc it should have been make your amp your charging handle ambidextrous so they, they they did that they went with radian um for me i actually ended up going we ended up putting a geisley uh gas buster in there just because of the gas um, which has been nice, but uh, the Radian charging handle is literally is they invent um, did they they didn't invent the ambidextrous, but they kind of perfected it, I would say. Yeah, the, the Radian charging handle has just kind of been like one of the standards for a long time, as far as beefiness. Yeah. Like uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of decent charging handles out on the market, a lot of good charging handles now, but Radiant has kind of been one of those golden standards for a long time. Uh, very, very, very nice ambi charging handle, and just just robust. Even if you don't really care about the ambi, uh, so it comes with a. It, I mean, if you got to mortar that rifle, that chart you, you can you can do it without a doubt of that charging handle not bending or breaking on you or anything. Yeah. So. Well, why don't you go ahead and talk about the trigger real quick? Yeah. So it's pretty awesome that. So one thing is obviously, guys, you're 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 paying for a premium rifle. So the the ADM rifle, the, the Stalker, is a premium rifle. Um, it comes straight out before I jump into the trigger. It comes straight out of the box with a distressed Cerakote, which honestly it it works relatively. We we talked about painting it. Uh, we chose not to paint it because <laughs> it actually blended in with our environment pretty well. So yeah. you guys know that me and Eric paint paint pretty much everything uh, constantly all the time. We enjoy it. We may we may paint this at some point in time, but the Cerakote job that it comes with that distressed um, stalker is what they're calling it. Cerakote job it does blend in. It breaks up patterns quite well. So you get that. Um, you get a you get a high quality barrel um, and uh, um, cri uh, Criterion barrels in them. Yeah. But then they go ahead and throw you a Geisley two-stage trigger in it. So you got an SSAE trigger in it. And I've been running, I have personally ran SSA tri SSAE triggers for uh, many years now. Um, any of you guys that are running them out there, you know as well as we do. Very, very reliable trigger. Um, so they, they, they've chose a great trigger that allows you to get some precision work done. Uh, allows you to go fast if you need to. And just, just in general, just a phenomenal, reliable trigger. Yeah, I mean the trigger, which is, is really cool that they that they offer. To, yeah, yeah. I mean, and even their, you know, guys, you you, yeah. you, you talk, Roy. Go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> uh, guys. There's a little delay between me and me, me and Eric. Uh, I'm remote again, uh, so so if you're hearing that delay, uh, that uh, between back and forth, where where I'm talking and Eric jumps in as far as talking, it kind of there's a slight delay. So yeah. I apologize for that, but uh, it's it's allowing us to record a little more often this way because we can't get together all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. So, sorry. Real quick on the on like Roy, you kind of talked about the about the Criterion barrel. So one of the things that that Tyler or that Roy brought up was the was the Criterion barrels. We have tested barrels and we're probably going to do a episode just on barrels and how important barrels are. One, just the life of them, but two, also quality. Um, you would be surprised for those who are not well versed in this realm of the AR-15 or just um, precision, or I wouldn't say precision rifles, but just general purpose style rifles, barrels make up everything. And to include longevity of life, um, accuracy, and Criterion is it's a barrel. It is a, it is a well-made barrel. The fact that ADM chose the Criterion barrel kind of speaks to their knowledge. Um, one of the build, uh, I mean, all the components inside of this gun, what kind of was shocking to myself and Roy is these are things that we would have naturally built a premium rifle with. Yeah, every rifle that I build on myself, I turn around and add all of these things. So when we when we when we received this rifle, when ADM contacted us up and, and Eric actually told me, hey, ADM sending us a rifle, I was like super stoked because I've been looking. I've ran ADM mounts 
for a very long time. For, for most part, most of my rifles have an ADM style mount on them. Uh, I've used yeah. their ACOG mount for, for years now. Fantastic. Love it. Always been a big fan of their company as a whole. Uh, and then I've, I have actually been looking at one of their rifles for quite some time, actually purchasing it myself. And yeah. primarily because of the parts that it came with and the abilities as far as some of the upgrades that you can straight get from it right off their website. So they come with a Criterion barrel, they come with a hybrid profile. The rifle that we have is actually the hybrid profile, uh, but yeah. you can you can upgrade to the core profile, which is really cool. Uh, I run a lot of the core profiles. I have a 13.9 core cri Criterion barrel. I like the weight balance uh, savings of it and the way that it tapers. For you guys that, that don't know, jump over their website and, and we're gonna do a Criterion, we're gonna do a, a talk up on Criterion barrels and some other barrels out there on the market. But um, the core profile that Criterion offers is really, really nice. That being said, this hybrid profile that the rifle came with, it just, it straight shoots too. Uh, it, it shoots yeah. very tight groups. Um, you throw some 77 grain Match King type stuff in it, it is, it is very, very solid. It tightens up. It definitely tightens up to definitely half inch, half half MOA or sub MOA. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you know, running really good loads, uh, it, it, it really does show the performance, you know, downrange. And we zero at 50 and we have super tight groups. And it really does translate when we start shooting distance with this gun. Um, but I, if it seems like we are kind of talking a lot about it these are just natural features yeah guys. i mean it, with it, the it, rifle. Just, just like i said a minute ago guys if i was building if i was building me a rifle out the internal parts that this thing's coming with that's how i'm specking it out yeah uh, i can i can run i can go to my safe right now and grab them out and start showing you guys and i have i have criterion barrels and in, in, in a good portion of most of my stuff i have i have a geisley ssae and pretty much almost everything i have a radiant charging handle in most everything um yeah. maybe potentially a guys like gas buster charging handle but outside of that yeah. it's, it's it's got one or the two in it uh, those are natural upgrades that i have put into my rifles uh and, and yeah. many of you as you're as you're progressing um you you bought your first rifle with with your intended budget you're going to start upgrading and at some point in time you're probably going to upgrade into a lot of these parts there's been many manufacturers that we have discovered over the time that the quality control is just not there um, and that's one of the reasons why we choose these particular parts. And it's, it's so nice and refreshing to see a manufacturer that, that offers you the ability to build out your own rifle like American Defense, okay? So you can buy a lower receiver, you can buy their handguards. You don't have to use their parts if you don't want to, but it's, it's very refreshing to find a manufacturer that goes out and you could tell that they're inspired by shooters is what they are um, because they're yeah. picking they're picking good quality manufacturers that have high quality control that there's there's a standard line there that uh, that they don't drop below and it's it, it yeah. really is refreshing knowing that you can get a rifle out of the box I know it's a premium rifle um, but it's just it's going to shoot I mean we've ran the stupid thing out to not stupid because it's phenomenal but um, we've ran the thing <laughs> stupid in a good way <laughs> stupid in a good way we've ran the thing out to 700 yards yeah you know I mean, and, and actually on that note of upgrading your rifle I actually have this quick story I would I would like to tell about one of my biggest experiences story with time. this rifle um, but first, if you are trying to upgrade your rifle, make sure you check out our sponsors. If you want to get some accessories for your rifle, like a Hot Pocket from Wiseman Company. Yep. Wiseman Company is one of our biggest sponsors, and they help us out with all kinds of gear, as well as Lunar Concepts in terms of making new stuff for us and things that are just no-brainer uh, gear things. Go check them out. They provide gear stuff, as well as upgrades for your rifle that are nylon um it's just a good the, company the x8 harness also, that you guys see it was wearing on the ghost yep um mm -hmm. that that's that's lunar concept sold by wiseman company uh all of our slings the contour sling that you see right eric pretty much wear all the time all the time all the time that is the that is that is from uh wiseman company so yeah ghost. and if you are looking to train and shoot jtac ranch that's where we train we train at jtac ranch um so if you want to check out jtac ranch and meet me and roy and Hang out with us and shoot with us. We're there. Yeah. That's where we're at. But I just poured water um, in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have a you have a very strong habit of pouring I, things in your I, eye. Yeah, I do. Uh, so <laughs> one of the the, the kind of going back to the story, um, one of the things that we found interesting is I was we, you know we shoot with a lot of different guys 
uh, at the ranch. And there were certain companies that I was shocked, you know, uh, one of the guys came over and was like, Hey, is this normal? And you know, hand guards being loose, um, gas, gas tubes being loose or off center or cockeyed. Um, there's been certain things that we've seen that, um, were a little bit shocking to see from the companies that these guys were bringing their rifles from stock, meaning that they bought the entire rifle or upper or whatever from that company. So, you know, while all this is going on, I, we, you know, we get a, a contact from American defense and Hey, you want to try this out? And Roy, or, Roy and I were excited, but at the same time, kind of like, man, quality control across the industry has not been the best. Um, so we're a little bit apprehensive because, you know, we don't want to be one bashing a company Two, We also don't want to be biased. Right? So when we got this rifle and started running the first thousand rounds, the second thousand rounds, um, through this thing and it just continues to perform all the tolerances are tight we put our you know our line indicators on there and nothing is shifting nothing is coming loose the the, the parts that they're putting in there shows that these guys know what to put on a rifle naturally as a natural upgrade it was very reassuring and um yeah like roy says you're paying for a premium rifle but you're also paying for natural premium upgrades that you would naturally put on a rifle if you were to build it yourself. Yep, most definitely. And the quality control has definitely been fantastic on this thing. Nothing has come loose. I'm used to seeing I'm used to seeing castle nuts come loose on guns. I'm used to seeing trigger pins walking out. You name it. Um, at some point in time, you know, we we have seen it. So, yeah. Talk about one of the things that kind of was a little bit uh, interesting as well was the uh the hd buffer so you and i we did a gpr video where we featured the griffin and Mm -hmm. the american defense rifle in the same video and both of those systems were running the similar type of buffer yeah so Um, at least from our perspective what we could observe yeah griffin is running more of a um a like a hybrid hydraulic style buffer ADM is running yeah. something I don't they call it their ADM HD buffer I'm not exactly sure the the true specs on it I would have to go look on their website here but it's it's a little different it's um it's, it has some spacing and separation in it uh, of course those guys could probably come up with a you know better terminology than what I am right now for it but it's you it's very just smooth it's it's different like you like when you're yeah. shooting the rifle the recoil impulse out of it is very very flat you don't feel the buffer when you start shooting more and getting used to your rifle and you put i mean eric you've ran this thing pretty much solely for the past how long have we had it now several months uh, right? yeah probably like three months two, yeah three so months. for for, th- for for three months it's definitely at least been three months um you've ran yeah. this rifle and only this rifle you right you yeah. can feel like that buffer like a lot of times as you'll see you'll feel the buffer almost beating into the back of the buffer tube yep and this yep. system you can feel it's very punchy is just, it's very punchy yeah uh this system on the back side when uh, under recoil you can just feel it's like really really soft it's like someone stuck a pillow in it. my buffer tube like um yeah, it, yeah. It, I, I think the one thing that really made in a first impression as soon as i pulled it out of the box and I was with Roy when we pulled it out of the box. Uh, I was like, this gun is balanced almost yeah. perfectly. Like it yeah, is and I think, balanced. I think that's really a play. Well. To, I think that's a play to the criterion barrels also back again, because yep. of the way that their 100%. profile cuts, um, it allows that rifle to be very balanced. And then obviously along with, uh, ADM and, and their rail, the rail is, it's not extremely heavy or anything like that. And their rail seems yeah. to be very lock, uh, tight on lockup. I didn't know what to think about that at first. Uh, I, I was looking at it and, and you know, with a lot of the newer, a lot of the manufacturers moving more towards like a wedge lock type type system, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know, you know, with these cross bolts that are going through it with set screws that kind of keep you from over torquing it in place. I didn't really, I was, I was like, man, is this thing going to hold up? Are we, are we going to be able to run mm-hmm. an IR laser on it? Uh, we're going to be able to run, yeah. you know, illuminators and stuff without, without getting any kind of shift. And, yeah. and honestly, we've had, we've had no issues with that whatsoever. So, um, it, it's holding up so far. We're, we're definitely several thousands of rounds into it. I don't even know. Um, I know you guys are going to ask how many rounds we've put through it. I, I couldn't even tell you. I Eric, mean, you may have a better idea. 
I would say probably, I mean, for the past three months, probably at least four to 5,000 rounds through it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, so, that, that would be a, that would um, be a realistic answer for sure. Yeah. And, and, in terms of not just a round count alone, but the going back to the rail, like you were saying, Roy, that's the first thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for any shift in that rail. That is important to me, especially when mm -hmm. I run a lot of passive shooting or night vision, IR devices, rail, uh, integrity rail shifting off of center is huge for me. That's something I almost immediately look for and no shift. It's literally like they melted it on there. Like it's rock solid. Um, and we are, at least I, I am not gentle with this thing. Uh, no, if you guys, guys, if you guys go check out some of, you check out just some of the stuff on IG. Um, I love Ben to death. Um, <laughs> Wiseman Company and JTAC Ranch. Ben Ben sets up most of the course of the fire. Eric kind of goes through, helps him set him up, and then uh, and then and then proves him along with Ben. But the, some of the, some of the things that Ben like the concrete blocks, the center blocks, stuff like that, uh, they're they're awesome. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy shooting around them, but it it takes a toll on your equipment. Like it it really does. JTAC Ranch as a facility to train at is like none other. And it puts your equipment through the paces as much as it puts you through the paces for sure. Like you're going to find out what breaks. And, and yeah. when we run this stuff the way we are and the different type of conditions over walls, everything, um, up and down ropes this past weekend, Eric's yanking up ropes with a rifle on him and, you know, and, and coming back down and just dust and everything. It just, it's holding true. Yeah. I, if the ranch is known for one thing, it's putting on tough courses that breaks equipment and shooters. So yeah. as far as your, your equipment and your guns, like it's, it, you got to really accept the fact that it's going to be a tool. And if it's a tool that's not well-made, it will show. There's been yeah. set many, many tools that have not performed or have failed completely uh, yeah. during a stage. And it's frustrating to see, but at the same time, it's also eye-opening for the user, the shooter, to see like, wow, like that, that did not hold yeah. up, you know, like it looks good, but it didn't hold up. Talk, talking about um, which, uh, what, uh, I know we've, we've discussed it before in the past, but how do you, how do you currently have that rifle set up? Like, what are you, what are you running for optics and lights and things like that? Well, so, I mean, if, if you wanted to really see like the exact setup, you can check out our GPR video, uh, where we kind of go a little bit more in depth on it. But, uh, I do run the Trigicon Credo two to 10. That's something that, uh, w with Roy and myself, we, we kind of go a little bit more in depth in our field of view for optics and our zoom capability, uh, just because of our area. Yeah. And we go really in depth on our criteria for why we pick certain optics and how we set up the gun based off of yeah. our environment and what our needs are specifically. And to, to breaks, breaks up, uh, not breaking subject, but talking about as far as like scoped rifles like that as far as like uh, magnified optics on 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 carbines guys we we put a poll up on youtube as far as if you guys would like to see a class that, that's a particular area oh, that yeah. me and eric me and eric spent a lot of time in um a lot of time in uh is scope carbines with different reticles mill reticles moa reticles bdc reticles uh and that's we we have have gathered together a, a, a good amount of knowledge that we want to start offering back so that's uh, uh that me and myself and Eric enjoy, uh, enjoy instructing, enjoy educating people. Uh, that's what this channel is all about. So we want to outreach. We want to take this, we want to take this another step further and start offering a scope carbine class. So, uh, yeah. that's something that we're looking I mean, for. So if you guys are, if you guys are interested in that, hit it up down in the comments, mm -hmm. let us know if you would, we, we did put a poll up. It, there was a lot of guys that were down, down for it, but let us know down in the comments too. If you've made it this far. So uh, at right now, let us know if you'd be interested in a scope carbine class. Yeah. And if you have the range that can facilitate that, we are definitely up to traveling to your state, to your city to come to you and, and run these classes. Um, because Roy and I have been blessed with the opportunity to be able to shoot out really far. I mean, it, it shooting out to 500 is part of our zero process. After we go zero, we're like, all right, let's go walk it out to five. The, the, so the very first uh, thing we do, as soon as we're done zeroing, and, and that's something that as far as uh, part of the curriculum and in, in, in future episodes also is understanding that not every rifle is created exactly the same. That 5,200 yard Correct. zero is not the same in every rifle. Uh, you know, you have to walk it out and confirm it. Your, your, what you think your 300 yard hold is going to be may not be the same based on your height over bore or based on that barrel length, um, based on the, the gun itself, the barrel uh, could, could slightly be different. So. Yeah. And I will say kind of going back to the barrel shooting out to 500 with this rifle 
was almost almost SPR worthy. Uh, I tried that ground lightly. Mm-hmm. Hail all hail to the Mark 12. But uh, I'm just saying, like, it was super easy, like, to be able to smack a silhouette at 500 yards. Um, not not as long only as a silhouette. The, you know, I mean, we run that 10-inch plate. Um, so, yeah, you know, we run a 10-inch plate on a, a swinger. A, a, two, a two MOA plate at 500, you know, for for a, a fighting style rifle not a spr not yeah. a special purpose rifle not a not a marksman rifle that's not that's not what it's intended for and we, we run that on that 10 inch blade at 500 yards very very consistently with with basically just xm 193 or you know 855 nothing special yeah. now we throw some we throw some 77 grain you know match kings or something like that in it uh, yeah it really shoots so yeah it really does and that's and that's kind of those things is it has the potential to be effective at those ranges, but is not the role specifically for those ranges. And that's that's something we talk about in the GPR, um, SPR video. If you haven't checked those out, check them out. Um, but one of the things that I did appreciate, kind of going back to the more superficial things of the rifle, is this MOE. If you're running Magpul furniture, it's a standard. If you're not running A2 hand grips, you're running standard MOE, Magpul furniture. You're going to see that on a lot of rifles, but they're running more, um, I would say, updated MOE furniture as yeah, well as a the, surefire yeah, workout. Yeah, you have the uh, SL stock as far as what it's coming, yep. coming with straight, straight yep. out of the factory, which is a very, very solid stock. Uh, generally speaking, for the most part, I do prefer um, the B5. Um, so I would, if I have a critique, if I'm buying a rifle, I would like to see that as a drop down field where I could potentially, yeah. you know, select that. But that's, I mean, yep. at the end of the day, that's not that, that's not a deal breaker. I mean, uh, you tomato, know, you, tomato. Yeah, you could go buy a B5 stock, throw it, throw it on there. But if I have the option, I'm probably going to, personally, I'm going to select the B5, uh, not the SOP mod, the, um, the Bravo, the one that's a little lighter. Bravo weight. 5. Yeah, yeah. the Bravo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I prefer that one. The SOP mod to me is a little, little too bulky. I don't need the battery storage. Um, I got enough batteries in my bag and I'm good. I don't need to put them in my stock. So I, I totally put them in my stock as well. And (laughs) in my, (laughs) I just put batteries everywhere. Very good. Uh, But one of the things I do like is as far as all the surefire device devices that they put on the barrel, they put a war comp on there. And if you show, if you shoot a surefire, uh, uh, can, whether that's the mini or the regular RC two, um, Having a break, uh, the war fight, the war comp is the best of both, best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, you know, from a military aspect, we shoot the three pin and four pin, um, and those those suppressors tend to get stuck with those type of flash hiders. So running a war comp, no problem getting that suppressor off with that type of uh, ratcheting locking mechanism or QD attachment, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah, and ours are um, the the. I think we mentioned it earlier, but the stalker is a 14.5, so it is pinned and welded. So you do have that uh, that muzzle device as far as what it comes with, straight straight from the factory. Uh, so if you guys got RC2s or any kind of surefires, which we did run an RC2 on it, uh, we've which which has been great, no no issues whatsoever. We've ran the mini Gen 2s on it also. Uh, gassing with uh, with the mini or the RC2, I don't don't really experience any kind of per se, a ton of overgassing. The rifle still runs very, very reliable. Um, no issues there, but it, it is pin and welded on. So if you guys are running something different, uh, like a dead air can or something, you would have to unpin that and have a, uh, you know, have your chemo or, or whatever it is, whatever muzzle device that you that you may be running um, pin, pinned onto that. But uh if you are running it suppressed, like I said, I, I really do not experience, and, and Eric, um, you know, can kind of tell you being a lefty, typically eating a little bit more gas, um, really not a whole lot of experience. We did change out that charging handle, like I said, from a Radiant, or Eric said earlier, from a Radiant to a um, to a Geisley Gas Buster, which kind of breaks it up a little more. Um, but yeah, I mean, been very, very happy um, with, with the rifle. I know Eric has. It's just, you know, not not really, I don't have a lot of bad things to say personally about it. Everything has been very, very solid. Um, not a whole lot I would change, just a couple little features. Like I said, it would be really cool to have that option of maybe like a B5 uh, Bravo stock as far as like, a, you know, a, a selection. Um, but not, not really a whole lot that I personally would change. Um, but yeah, 
looking forward to continuing working with ADM. ADM has been really, really great to us as far as um, one of those manufacturers that have, have stepped up. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't really feel like it was really overgassed. You being a lefty shooter, yeah. not not a lot. Running the RC2 on it or the, uh, the Mini has been great. Most of everything that you guys have heard us talk about in prior episodes has been bought and paid for by us. Um, this yeah. is the first we buy. Everything. This is probably the, much. yeah. This we, we pretty much buy everything. This is one of the first pieces of gear that um, or you know equipment that we've gotten from a manufacturer. Um, and I want to say thank you to American Defense for that for sure. Yeah. But how and specifically awesome. Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy's been awesome over there. Those guys are all awesome. Um, continue. We we definitely look forward to continue working with them. Uh, I would highly recommend. I will probably end up buying. You know, because because it. Eric has this one. I'll probably end up buying myself a ADM. Um, I think I'll probably pick the 13.9 core barrel. Is what I'll go with. So uh, I like yeah. I like the 13.9 core. Yeah, it's it's legit. And, and as far as um, the gassing, kind of going back to that, I, if you for all my southpaw shooters out there, especially if you run suppressed or not, you're eating that gas. You just are. It's just a natural way of the gun. It's the natural way of the system and the way it's designed. Um, you do not eat this gas and it's nice you know where you shoot a lot and you get those watery eyes because your eyes look black like you just came out of a, a coffin because you're a vampire from the 15th century but you don't Smeared have that mascara. problem <laughs> yeah you're freaking you're bleeding out of your eyes you're, after you just watched twilight for the seventh time yeah your your mascara is bleeding down your face <laughs> <laughs> or it's just me after a photo shoot with roy and tyler but like yeah it's exactly it's one of those <laughs> It's uh, it's one of those things where they you can tell the people who built these guns put some pride into the way that they put them together. And that's why I say, you, know, you, you are paying for a premium rifle, but it's a premium rifle that's put together with everything naturally that a solid shooter would would put together anyways. Um, yep. So that is something that I want to kind of hammer home. They, they put everything inside of this rifle that you would naturally upgrade. Um, I've been happy with it, uh, for sure. Yeah. One thing that uh, is kind of important, though, is, you know, finding out who your South Park shooters are. Who, who are those guys as far as, you know, your community and what you're going to build? If you're looking to find a community, Florida's a great community, and you should definitely check out Tampa One Mortgage. <laughs> Tyler, uh, Tyler, buddy, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler's Tyler. not a lefty. <laughs> He's not a lefty. He's not a southpaw. Ah, bollocks! <laughs> but he, yeah, but he's a he's a sweetheart. I'll he tell you right now. Uh, yeah. So definitely, if you're gonna move to the Florida area and you would like to find a house or a place to live, especially in today's economy with the real estate market being the way that it is, check out Tampa One Mortgage. Ask for Tyler, and come down to Florida. We would love to train with you and also figure out a, the best way to help you transition to this state. So uh, if you are looking to move to Florida, Tampa One Mortgage, check it out. It's going to be in the description below. But kind of a story to follow up with that caveat. Um, for me, I've always had to utilize the bad lever when it comes to being able to send that bolt forward or my reload process with a non-ambidextrous gun. Uh, I love the bad lever. I think that they uh, Magpul kind of paved the way with that device. But American Defense really nailed it home with a very uh, a natural way to send the bolt home, ambidextrous wise or ambidextrously or like. How do, how would I say that? I don't know. Um, You're making up words now. <laughs> Recipro re re Recipro I can't even forget. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was that? What did it was that word that I was like I made up, and you guys were like that's not a real I word. I don't even know because because that's oh, that's, that's our that's our typical. Uh, we, we we start. <laughs> yeah, misinterpreted. Oh, yeah. That that was. <laughs> that was, that was misinterpreted. I misinterpreted is, is my is my made up word. Listen, I'm or if you guys watch, listen. If you watch any of I'm our just, other videos, I'm, listen to. I'm just a Roy kid says kid. S W is sweat S H W sweat. I sweat sweat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I sweat uh, a lot. Jason, hey, right. I'm a kid that grew up in Plant City. I'm just some you know just some redneck kid that grew up in the woods. <laughs> uh, no freaking shoes. No freaking shoes. With bare feet. Bare feet. Uh, yeah, freaking a. So if 
Um, one of the things that I kind of wanted to talk, uh, did want to talk about is there are different options that you can get with the American Defense UIC Patrol Two, uh, especially with the uh, the one that we received, the Stalker. You can actually get a law folder um, with this rifle. So if you did get a thirteen nine or something a little bit smaller, uh, I think they have thirteen nine with the core barrel or a sixteen inch. You can fold that down with the law folder and that is an option that you can get at the end of the day and this is something that we want to hammer home that i'm I'm sure a lot of other companies do as well that are solid youtube channels you cannot buy performance this is a tool right Mm -hmm. uh i mean yeah it's it's just it's it's a it's a it's a high high quality tool it's just like any any craftsman any any contractor any any chef any any you know technician high level mechanic they're going to they're going to buy the best tools for what they are but but their their schooling their on the job training is uh is where they is where they excel that's what that's what's going to take them to the next level uh training physically getting out there we talk about it all the time and putting the time in behind your rifle spending tons of time behind that thing learning everything that there is about it uh, understanding its quirks, understanding its happy points, and 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 where you are as a shooter along with it. So, yeah, the tool should not be the handicap for the user; it should complement the user. Yep. So make sure that you are the asset, not the liability. Go get training, whether that's through whatever training company you decide to pick. You know, we are also looking to get into the training world and offer certain courses. So if you're interested in that, check out our links. But whatever training you get into, vet your instructors, but don't let that also scare you away from going and getting training. You are the most important asset. You are the valuable thing. And so investing yourself is the best, the best investment you could possibly do or possibly have. You know, buying these tools to complement you and your abilities is what you should be looking to do, not replacing Mm-hmm. your lack of ability right correct correct exactly the, the buying a higher quality tool to, to for your lack of ability trying to buy performance or buy um you know skill is is not gonna not gonna get there you're gonna have to you're gonna have to invest in yourself you're gonna have to you're gonna have to train you're gonna have to put the time in um soak the information and in. vet your trainers go take take go take a class don't immediately take a class right after that one take some time soak that material in that you learned in that class and then continue to continue to work on that until you till you reach re, re, Eric talks about it all the time everyone has a level I'm using hand signals like you guys can see me uh, <laughs> everyone has a level that <laughs> everyone has a level that they start at regardless of where it is everyone has a level and at some point in time you're going to start rising up but then you're going to see a, a dip in performance based off of what type of new skill set that you introduce that's one of the big things that I also like the uh, you know that you don't get stuck in a routine of just doing the exact same thing constantly all the time. Step out of your comfort zone. If you're comfortable running bill drills at seven yards and you're blazing it down in you know in two seconds or 1.7 seconds or something like that, step out of that comfort zone. Um, move over. You know if you're running if you're running rifle drills and you're you're blazing it down everything like that. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Step out of your comfort zone. Go see what you can do at 200 yards. Go see what you can do at you know run those same drills. Run run that drill at 200 yards. Run that. Uh, see what see what your up times are on a full size zip tick at 200 yards. You know, run run some stuff out to 300, 400. Uh, if you have 500 yards, go go to that distance. Uh, see see what it is. Uh, one of the drills that um, uh, if you guys have access to um, in the availability, if you have out to 200 yards, I actually think it's a pretty good drill. Um, it's 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 baseline. The one Lucas did that we've ran a couple of times uh, that he put yeah. uh, posted. Um, that, I think it's a great drill. Um, it's a 200 yard drill with your rifle. It, it, anyone. And for, for the most part, almost any skill set can, can, can shoot it. It gives you a baseline, uh, a very good baseline where, where to kind of see where you're at and, as a shooter and what maybe you need to progress on. Um, I think it's a great drill. So you guys you definitely, if I got to give a shout out as far as like some of the drills that I like when it comes to rifle, staying in that side of that 200, it's a very easy drill to set up. And if you have 200 yards, you, you can set it up very, very easy. You just need an IPSC target um and, and a rifle and some rounds it, it's not even a whole lot of rounds is it i can't even remember 
no yeah. no so. and they give all the details out at t-rex arms as far as a good standard yeah. baseline to figure out where your level of performance it's a good tool it's a good way to gauge yeah. um where yeah. you are um and with that also one of those shortfalls is equipment you have to learn to also evolve with equipment as it evolves so that's also going to be somewhere where you have to kind of go out of your comfort zone to try new things try new equipment innovation is a good thing okay sometimes there is a better way to do something you know um and then sometimes most of the time there's a lot of ways to do something that doesn't really need to be reinvented but there are some good ways and good companies like american defense who are pushing the boundaries to push the limits and sometimes it is good to evolve because it will complement your skill set so if you're a company and you are like-minded like us, reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you. Hit us up in our DMs or our link. Um, yeah, we are just all about pushing the individual and to further their knowledge, to further their abilities, to go out and train. And if you are thinking the same way as we are, hit us up. Yeah. Awesome. As far as another way to hit us up outside of Instagram and social media, which is, uh, you know, it's a it's a battle that guys that would obviously we're all fighting because uh, they're they're anti um, anti for what we believe in. So they, anti they us. Yes. Yeah. Anti us. Um, so if you do want to chat with myself, Eric or Tyler, head over to our website. There's a little chat button down there you are going to talk to me you're going to talk to eric you're going to talk to tyler we don't have there's not a robot there um so if you don't get an answer right away it's because you know one of us is probably tied up or something <laughs> it's like that. not you know, a robot there. it's not a robot there so you are physically sending a message <laughs> to myself eric and tyler um it's a really really neat program that we have on our website that we've integrated in it's going to be a lot a way for you guys to connect um with us and also stay in the loop with us for you know training uh ghost drops all kinds of cool stuff that we got coming uh coming down the pipeline here in the future so uh that being said hey you guys have asked for it two xl shirts two xl shirts will be live on the website uh we're recording this july 11th I would say about a couple of days. By the time this goes live, the 2XL t-shirts will be live on the website. So. And also keep up to date for another ghost drop. You guys have been begging. We have answered. We're going to bring in doing another ghost drop. So if you want any news or behind the scenes information, ghost drops, information, checking out our pictures and our media for Barrel and Hatchet, go check out our Instagram page. Continue to check our YouTube channel. Subscribe, like all that stuff for those who keep dropping comments in the in the comment page saying this is for the algorithm thank you so much for that <laughs> and also continue the conversation there are so many people who get so much information out of that and we love how positive it is to continue uplifting the community and not tearing it down so roy any final words no guys get out there and train get out there and shoot uh find a community find find some like-minded people uh I know it's hard to do. It's that honestly, that's the most difficult thing to do. The the actual training portion of it, buying the equipment, is the easy thing to do. Finding the like-minded people is difficult, but you have to search for it. Um, get out there, visit different ranges, visit different communities. You will find somebody. So. And always remember, you have us, the Barrel and Hatchet community, and all the people within it. So, for all of you listeners out there, stay strong. Be the asset. Don't be the liability. Continue to train, and we'll see you on the next episode.